there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Here with the Dominaria pre-release pack. We're gonna open this up, build a deck with it, see what we can come up with. Hope everyone is looking forward to their pre-release. I am. Apparently it's kind of a slower format from the people that have watched the pre-pre-releases. So we'll see what we get out of this deck. See if we get any bombs and what we can make of it. Alrighty, so we have six packs, a dice. We get a red dice. Who cares about that? Uh, we'll see what the promos are. You get two promos this time, so they're trying to outdo themselves with Dominaria, making sure that everyone is looking forward to it. So you see a, uh, a Stronghold, the Cabal Stronghold. Uh, I am not too happy with this card. I'm thinking enough Commander decks will want it, though, that it will uh, see some play in Commander, but it just seems like it's strictly worse. You can go look at some of my videos where I've talked about um, why I don't like Cabal Stronghold, uh, Cabal Stronghold. And the other one is the Quendal Pride of Femerif. And this one's Double Strike and Creatures you Control with First Strike of Double Strike. So there's a lot of Brew Around, Build Around Limited, uh, plausibility with that card. And it probably will just go in any white deck because of, it's basically a 4-2 for 4 mana. And if it gets pumped up, it does even more. Alrighty, so pack number one. We have the Bloodstone goblin we have an invoke the divine we have an opt with new art a uh get you journey mage so it's a good wizard uh enabler there we have the gift of growth the uh, it can pump up something so there's a good little interaction right there gift of growth with like quendal pride of Femrith. the dark bargain look at the top three cards of your library put two in your hand and the other two in your graveyard and it deals two damage to you so it works kind of like a a, if anything, utilizes the graveyard. The short sword could go on something like Quendal if we have enough to actually make it work. The Pegasus Cor uh, Corsair attacks another target, attacking creature against flying. We're getting a nice little white strategy going on right now. A uh, Blessed Light, Exile Heart Creature Enchantment. This is actually quite good in limited. Five mana to exile a bomb, sure. Uh, we have the Broken Bond, which can destroy another artifact or enchantment, so no one's going to be playing artifacts or enchantments versus me. And the Song of Freilis, until your next turn, creatures get have added one mana of any color, and then you, at three, you put a plus one counter on each creature you control, they gain Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible. Again, not a terrible thing if you get to three with something like Quendal. Uh, it's kind of, kind of an awkward card to set up, though. We have the Sage of Latinam, which is another human artificer that can sacrifice an artifact and draw a card. If we get some sort of artifact strategy and a Thrawn Temporal Gateway. You can put a historic card from your hand on the battlefield if we get anything crazy like the, uh, what, the seven mana dragon. Uh, that could definitely go in our deck. And the Whisper Blood Liter Liturgist. Sacrifice two creatures or return to our creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So at least the two cards, the Dark Bargain and the Whisper uh, Blood uh, Liturgist actually work together. Get a nice little cleric token there. Not bad. All right, so not not too crazy of cards. The Thrawn Temple Gateway, of course, is going to be one of the... Um, it's very underrated, in my opinion, for Commander. I think there's going to be some very busted things you can do uh, with the Thrawn Temple Gateway, especially with cards that untap artifacts and produce a lot of mana. We have the Get You Chronol Chronicler, another decent little wizard that can get back a uh, instant or sorcery. Uh, we have the Benelish Honor Guard. It gets plus one here if you control another legendary. Our white little aggro package is still looking pretty good. The Artif Artificer's Assistant, 1-1 one, one Flyer. The Keldon uh, War Caller, whenever it attacks, you put a lore counter on target Saga, so it can ramp up lore counters. Uh, you can actually put it on your opponent's, um, right? Oh, Saga, you control. Oh, womp womp. Too bad it, you can't put it in, like, screw your opponent's stuff up. Uh, we have the Stronghold Confessor. Uh, Menace 1 1, really good right there. And if you kick it, it enters the battle with two plus one counters. These are very underrated in draft just because I remember playing similar cards like this during original Zendikar. Uh, it comes out as a 1 1 if you want a very aggressive card. And then later on, like if you have to cast this on turn 4, a 3 3 Menace for uh, 4 mana is still on par with the curve. Uh, Peace of the Sky seals that 7 damage to target creatures flying. It's a decent little cyber card. We have the, the Shepherd, the, or the Sap, Sap Herd. Uh, you have a Maya Sapherd, a 2 2, and when it enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 Sapling creature token. We all know how good Jungle, uh, whatever it's called, <laughs> Jungle Pioneer is in Ixalan. This is similar. And this is a card that actually does work with the Song of, the, of Frey at least. So if we get enough of those, I think it'll be a pretty decent one. A Vanilla 5 5 Trampler, if we have to make room for it. A Rampaging Cyclops is a 4 4, and gets negative 0 as long as two or more creatures are blocking it. So pretty bad. 
filler card. Divination, can't go wrong there with their, uh, if you need to draw some cards. The Untamed Kavu, Vigilance Trample, if it, it was kicked, and there's about like, three plus one, one counters. Um, so it's either a two, two, four, two with Vigilance Trample, not bad. And then, of course, if you put five mana into it, it is a five, five Vigilance Trample. So right right off the bat, still, after the two packs, we're looking at white and green, I think, are the, the better. We have some great black cards, though, just not a, enough of them to really... I'll uh, get excited yet. A Flash Wizard 2-2 Merfolk Trickster. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls it. loses all abilities until a turn. Very powerful of a card. If we can get the Wizards. Oh, and the Tempest uh, uh, Jin. It gets plus one to your for each basic island. Unfortunately, though, in draft, it's going to be quite awkward. Has anyone ever played like a card like Nightmare in draft? It gets very difficult uh, to make that happen. The Slimefoot's the Stowaway. So now we're getting a nice little Sapperling black i'm liking the black green a lot so was at first the white green uh, was edging out of where i'd be building at the moment however now it looks like black green if we get some more black cards might be a little bit better than yeah we don't even have a lot of white at the moment uh, either the blue still isn't out of the question we got some good blue cards here of course we're only a couple packs into or two packs into this and let's go on to the fervent strike uh, creature gets plus one zero for strike until the turn. Kind of little uh, synergy with the Quen, uh, Quende as it then makes it double strike because creatures with first strike have double strike. Uh, we have the Sergeant of Arms. When it enters the battlefield, if it's kick, create two white, white soldier creature tokens. So again, now we have some more uh, little synergies with the song. The Befuddle, not a bad little filler card. The Bloodstone Goblin, if you cast a kick spell, it gets plus one one a menace until the turn. The Soul Savage, return two dark creatures from your graver to your hand. This is a really, really, really good card in limited. It's it's a divination for black, but a little better than that because you can specifically get, get back bombs that have been destroyed. And limited, that's ends up happening quite often um, in these type of, of formats. If someone takes care of your bomb and you need a way to get it back, uh, so don't underestimate cards like this. Grow from the ashes. You can search your life for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, and then if you kicked it, you get two lands. This is actually pretty good for fixing if we have to go into three colors. We have another broken bond and another divination. Uh, Mesa Unicorn, great 2-2 lifelinker. It's Bishop. Bishop uh, uh, without kind of the relevant um, uh, creature type like in Ixalan. We have the the Ashther Guild, uh, Glider. Flying can't block, so a three mana for two and flying. Definitely filler. A three mana, it deals five damage to our creature. Very, very good. Sorcery speed removal. And then if you have to kick it for an obscene six more mana, so nine mana total, you can do ten mana to divide it as you choose among any number of targets instead. So it's going to be a blowout late game if you can get there. We did have that little mana ramp that could possibly somehow get there. Uh, the Orcish Vandal, Sacrifice an Artifact, deals two damage to any target. That's not a bad card for removing uh, specific threats. A Hinterland Harbor. Um, and we have a Baird, Steward of, of Argive. Four mana for two, four Vigilance. Creatures can attack you or Planeswalk unless you pay one. Very, very good and limited. This is, this is quite powerful in the limited format. So not a bad card there. Um, I think that pack is, is getting us away from black again. Black has some awesome cards. Very Four very good playable cards, unfortunately. And the Dark Bar Bargain and, and a, a card like Soul Savage do have a lot of synergy. Unfortunately, we just don't have a, enough to really make a deck out of it. Our red's also not terrible. Uh, we'll definitely have to keep an eye on red here. Uh, we have the we have the Get You Chronicler. Uh, nice little kicker to get back an instant or sorcery spell. The ben another Benelish Honor Guard. Nice little white, white card. The Artif Artificer's Assistant again. We have the Corrosive Ooze. Uh, destroys equipment. Still ni a nice little 2-2 two -two bear. A Drudge Sentinel. This is actually a very powerful limited card because you can give it indestructible in for turf turn for three so it's a very aggressive attacker and a great blocker uh we have the shivan fire deals two damage to our creature if it was kicked deals four damage instead nice little card and a, a sparring construct really good and limited i'd say for a one one that then when it dies puts a one one counter it does have this nice little synergy with the orcish vandal to not only pump up an attacker or whatnot but remove a blocker uh, get his reproach a very powerful card in the uh limited environment it's actually playable in standard as well um in a lot of uh, a lot of times Land where elves and one mana, uh, one one. They can tap for a green, so green of, of course is getting some more love. The Thalid Omnivore, which can sacrifice another creature to give it plus two plus two until the turn. If it's happening to sacrifice this way, you gain two life at three three for three mana or for four mana. It goes definitely in the strategy. The memorial, the memorial of, uh, to unity. Um, you can sacrifice to look at top five cards. You may put a creature card from them, and the rest on the bottom. So this is great late to pick up a creature. 
um, to give you some more uh, reach uh, or range. The wild onslaught put plus one counter on each creature you control if this spell uh, if this spell is kicked, but two instead. But that's quite a bit of a kicker. Instant speed though to put a permanent counter. Very very good card. The flame of Keld. It's kind of hard, awkward to make it work. Discard your hand, draw two cards. If a red source you control would deal damage, deals that much plus two. And we have a nice little Evra. How, uh, the, the, the Witness is actually Halkion Witness. This is actually a bomb in Limited because there will be a lot of times when if your opponent taps out or whatever reason you, you get through with it, uh, you could exchange your life total with the power and then one-shot your po opponent. And then the thing, it's got lifelink. So I say this is a pretty good Limited bomb too. So again, we're all over the place. I like the red removal. I like, like all of our blacks are solid, solid cards. And the green, I think green, no matter what, is getting a nod over the other colors. Again, it... it, it it can change when we actually piece everything out. I want to play this slime foot, but who knows if it's going to be able to get there. All right. Let's go on the Fervent Strike. We have a plus one serum first strike again. Nice little synergy. We have another Sergeant of Arms. Another Befuddle. Uh, a Gaia's Protector. Must must be blocked if able. 4-2 for 4 mana. A 2 mana 1-3 if it is kicked. Each opponent discards 2 cards. Uh, Jousting Lance. It's plus 2 plus 0. As long as it's your turn, equip creature has first strike. <sighs> kind of a cool little thing again to give something double strike and plus 2 plus 0. Sapling Migration. Great little card in the... the I, I still like the at least green saplings at this point. We have a lot of ways to go wide with it. Blink of an eye can return an online permit. This is uh, into the royal minus the ability to get lands. Uh, very, very good card. The seismic shift to uh, target land up two creatures can't block. Not a bad card either uh, for just the, the things can't block. A 3-2 flying for uh, four. Uh, not sh not too shabby, especially there are some cool ways to give that uh, plus one with zero and double strike with the, the card. The Urza's Tome, two mana draw card, then discard a card unless you, you exile a historic card from your graveyard. Uh, okay. So I guess that's not terrible for looting late game. Another wild onslaught. That's going to be good in the sapling. Uh, the board, the weatherlight. Look at the top five cards. Reveal a historic card from among them. Put them on your hand. I don't know if we have enough to actually make that worthwhile. It's giving us a lot of these 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 nice white uh, legendary creatures. And we have the cre card to go with it. So I think white is still... White is, is ahead of black at the moment. And it, it wouldn't be out of the question to splash. Whenever you cast this source, but return to our creature card with current mana cost three less from Graver to the battlefield. Very, very powerful in our little deck here. Okay, let's go on to the last pack. The only problem is if we go that, the, the Pride of Ephemera actually doesn't have a lot of synergy with uh, cards. So we have another uh, Warlord's Fury creature going at first strike, draw a card. A charge goes good in our go wide. Arcane Flight, not a bad card to give something plus one plus one flying. Another Cargo Skin Witch. Uh, an Arbor Armament, put a plus one counter on target creature, that creature gains reach until turn, pretty filler in my opinion. A Sparring Construct, Eviscerate, if, if there is a reason to splash for black, there's a good reason right there. Unwind, uh, Voltaic Servant, the Run Amok, and the Wizard's Retort can counterspell if you have a, uh, cost one less if you have a, a Wizard. The Knight of Malice, really very, very efficient card, plus one plus zero. Uh, if you if your opponent controls a white permanent, it's got Hex for Wife and First Strike. So there's one little synergy we do have. Um, and the Mirari's Conjecture, f uh, five mana. As this saga, uh, so it's return target instant card from your graveyard to your hand. Return target social card from your graveyard to hand until end of turn. Uh, whenever you cast an sorcery, you may copy it. Really, really good card. I don't know if we have enough to make it work. Uh, the Arvod, the Curse, Death Touch, and Life Link, other legendary creatures will get plus two, plus two. So. I'm thinking we're probably going to end up going into Abzan. Hopefully I can justify a way to actually splash it because it's very, very awkward. If not, it's it's more likely just going to be green-white. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and look it through, and I'll come up with a deck list uh, here shortly. All right, so here's the final result. I think Abzan, the problem I'm having with this deck, there, there's some good news and some bad news. Good news is we don't have any doubles outside of white, so we can easily go heavy on the white mana. Uh, bad news is that we are in three colors and pretty deep in all three of those colors as far as having five colors that require black, uh, seven colors that require green, 
and the rest that require just white. But I think this is the best way to build the pool. So kind of disappointed at how we ended up with, I mean, I could cut like one of the colors and put in the, the filler artifacts, but this deck has the most payoff. It does a good job really uh, clogging up the board until we do get to the late game. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how it works out. Blue just didn't have enough to really get there. We had a lot to do with spells, but then nothing really to finish it off, in my opinion. I think the blue is quite lackluster. And red also, unfortunately, uh, hits this mark. Had a lot of like ways to make things aggressive. I don't think the Fervent Strike is very playable unless you somehow were to get like a Quende Pride Ephemera type deck and then a bunch of these cards to get everything double strike. But again, that's pretty... pretty uh, rare for that to happen. The Fight with Fire is also another awkward, uh, well, that's no, not an awkward card. It's a great card, and I'd love to splash for red. Uh, maybe instead of, like, something else, same thing with the Shiv and Fire, but it makes it makes a red pool kind of awkward that we have a, a few removal, but not a lot of creatures. Two of the Crown Lookers, in theory, could be a nice way to get back some removal spells or something, uh, but it's... <laughs> I, I already, you know, we do have this little combo, the Soul Salvage and, and the, the Chronicler that work really good late game because you can't get this back, this dies, then you get back the Chronicler, rinse and repeat over and over. But it's just too wishful thinking in my opinion at that point. So I, I don't think that, that red quite got the cut. There just wasn't a lot to do there. So that left us with white, black, and green. Um, so there, I could easily go down to one of the other colors, but then they, I don't think they really work as strongly as they could uh, combined. I think that all three of these these colors combined gives us the best potential that our deck can be. So off on the two drop slot, we have the Benelish uh, Honor Guards. Uh, they actually get pumped up nice with the one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six legendary creatures. So one will probably out, be out statistically with the Benelish Honor Guard. This can just attack in. Um, for usually 3-2, I'm sure it can get even bigger than that. So not a, not a terrible card here. Uh, I could put Llanowar Elf in the slot. The whole reason I didn't put Llanowar Elf or like the Thalid Omnivore is another cut that I end up cutting. Uh, just because I, I don't know if that's the route we wanted to go. This could give us another angle. Um, I'll have to wait and play and see how well it works. And if not, this could easily come back in. It could be a finisher by itself. But again, I'm not, I'm not too impressed with having to use my own creatures as resources that then we're going to want to pump up later on. Uh, we have the Mace Unicorn just, just seems really, really powerful uh, in this particular deck because what it's doing is it's clogging up the board and gaining its life early on. Uh, the Knight of Malice uh, is going to usually get plus one plus zero as long as any player controls white permanent. I read, I misread that during the thing. So, of course, in my in this is being a black-white deck, it's going to be a 3-2 first strike, most likely. Uh, then on the three drop, our three drop's kind of low because all we have is the Yavimaya Shepherd. It puts out a 2-2 two, two, and a 1-1. One, one. Um, we do have the Slimefoot Stowaway as well, but I, I didn't even put this in the three drop slot because it's probably not going to come out on turn three. It's going to be very, very tough for this card with the uh, our mana. It's going to be more of a later game card that then we can utilize the, the four mana dump to create a lot of sapling cre uh, tokens just, just kind of clog the board. These type of, of cards can win limited uh, games by themselves. Anything that has some sort of activation that can continue to put out jump blockers or, or overwhelm. A lot of times in limited, the board, board state gets stalled and anyone that can unstall the board state through something either push through or go wide is a, a card you want to highly, highly uh, think about putting in your, your pool. Uh, our four drop has some decent cards here. We have the Quindle Pride Ephemeref, of course, this is a double strike, so a decent little double strike card. The Steward of Argive, which is going to make it a mess for our opponents to attack in. And the Teshar Ancestor's Apostle, uh, which can then uh, bring back, we don't have a lot of historic in here, but hopefully it can bring back like our, our Macy Unicorn, for example, later on. Uh, our five drop slot, we have the, our, our four drop slot, we also have the Whisper of, of the Blood Liturgist. I think that this is a nice little combo with the Slime Foot to bring back anything later on. I thought that, again, I, I like synergies, so maybe there's a more powerful way to build this deck, but as far as synergistically speaking, I, this is this is actually pretty sweet. Um, little little build in it up. The uh, five drop, we have the Untamed Kavu, because I'm, I'm calling this a five drop because most likely, again, Green on turn two is going to be very unlikely. Plus, you probably want to wait for this payoff as a 5-5 five five rather than as a 2-2. Two two. And the Arvob the Cursed is Death Touch Lifelink 3-3. Three three, great card and all your other legendary creatures. We'll get that added buff as well. The 4-drop slot has our bomb, the Evra. 
uh, Halicon of Halcyon. Halcyon Witness. That's how you say it, right? Ever a Halcyon Witness. Uh, someone tell me how to pronounce that correctly. I'm sure I murdered it. As our bomb. And that's kind of our creature package. So we have some decent creatures here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, forgot about these because these are our six drops as well. The Sergeant of Arms, if we have to uh, kind of panic cast them on turn three, we can. But usually we want to wait till we can kick this to put two more soldier creature tokens. And the same thing I put with the sapling migration. It's more of like a six drop we can cast as two. Uh, but we do want as many saplings out as possible uh, for our our finishers here, which is going to be the Song of Freilis, the Wild On. Slot, uh combination where you're just going to try to flood the board and then if you can actually kick this for seven or eight then plus two plus two to or two uh all of your creatures permanently is probably going to be enough to get the job done same thing the song of, of frailies it's going to be I, I i thought they were just better than the the charge uh type effect um even if you have to cast these for just the four mana we do have some draw with the dark bargain and we do have some removal with the blessed light uh, eviscerate and get his reproach so i can take care of my, a lot of my opponent's bombs especially with these two cards um usually they're going to have like one or two bombs because you want to in this particular deck i'm going to want to be patient and the get his reproach can take something that's early on that's causing problems or it can probably take on a pretty good late bomb so nice little abs and recursion plus go wide plus plus sapling type strategy i'm i'm okay with this this uh, i'm sure there's better pools more synergistic pools uh more aggressive things that, that can be done but this pool ended up being a pretty sweet uh, uh pool hope you enjoyed this video and I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing how everyone does at their dominaria pre-release i'll let you know how i do with this deck and other decks that i'll i'll, I'll build and yeah it seems pretty fun the draft format seems incredible uh, i'm gonna be really really hyped to uh, uh try that out anyway this has been kevin with rogue thanks for watching